Jenny here back with another House of Night book review. Today, again, we have a two for one because one's an actual novel and one's another novelia. But first, let me just say I hope everyone is staying safe out there with this damn virus. Um, please remember to wash your hands, sanitize, stay indoors. We're book geeks. We like staying indoors anyways. At least that's me. I hope you guys are the same. But let's just get into this video. Today we'll be discussing Zenobia Zell. Love Zenobia, by the way. One of my favorite professors at the House of Nights. And Destin. Very depressing book. But still good. Because we get new characters. And they're awesome. Because they involve Zenobia. Okay. So, I'm thinking we should go with the Novelia first. Okay. So, in the Novelia as well, it's obvious... It's just about the Novia. Z is not in this book. Sorry, I'm getting a bit warm. Um, what do you guys think of my Harley Quinn jacket, though? It's pretty freaking cool. Um, so, this is like a gazillion years before we meet Zoe. Because the Novia might not look old, but she's a vampire, so she's pretty damn old. Not as old as the High Council or Neferet, if I'm correct. I could be wrong. I don't remember what year this takes. Yeah, place and I just know that this her story is very very sad very sad very very bad um <sighs> Eleste Mort I hope I said that right <clears throat> she is dead Zenobia's world exploded with the sound of screams and three small words she would never forget the feeling of dread that engulfed her so Zenobia was basically a bastard daughter of some high and mighty douche human and when his daughter died she took her place because they looked very similar I just think Zenobia's hair is like a lighter shade of blonde almost like white um her mother's like okay now you're going on this ship you're gonna pretend to be your dead half sister which she was a bitch anyway from what I understand but uh. that happens with <laughs> like bastard daughters. It's usually a bastard son, so I like the twist in this one. On the ship, we meet a priest. Uh, he doesn't give the Catholics a good name. Eh? He is obsessed with any and every pretty woman he sees. He just wants to bend them over. And that's actually said in the book about bending people over. I'm, I'm not being weird here it's it's in the book it actually says that and he's just he's gross he's nasty he's disgusting we don't like him at all if you're into that kind of stuff that that that's 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 your problem um <laughs> but Lenovia meets martin a very attractive black man that tends to the horses on the ship and Lenovia loves horses which is obvious in the House of Nights here because she is the equestrian studies teacher, professor, whatever. Um, <clears throat> so this is what I love about the Novelias. I don't know if I said this in Dragon's Oath. Is, ah, oh, look, here's the, here's the nasty priest. They have illustrations. Isn't it? It's, it's, it's very well done. I just, I don't like that douche. Ah, and here we have Zenobia and Martin. Now, remember, she isn't marked here yet. She's still on the boat. But a lot of shit goes down on this boat. Like, the priest actually identifies her as a fraud for pretending to be her dead half-sister. Because she wouldn't sleep with him. Which I wouldn't either, ew. Um, when they finally make it off of the boat to wherever they went. <coughs> Sorry, smoker's lungs. Trying to quit. It's not going well. Um, this dude, this priest, sees that she's, she's marked, she gets marked when they reach land again, and he's actually with a bunch of nuns, which is pretty cool, um, but even when she's marked, she refuses to have anything to do with this perverted Catholic priest guy, and he actually sets stables on fire. Martin tries to save her, and Martin dies. The Novelias of this series, they're really depressing. It's actually yeah. pretty damn sad. <laughs> if you do hear my husband, I'm sorry. He's playing Dota in the background. Um, yeah. 
then the videos are pretty depressing. I mean, w soon we'll be actually discussing Nefert's Curse. And that's actually one of the worst ones for me. But we'll get into that in that video. <clears throat> On today's turn, remember in the last one, I told you guys Zoe's mom was killed by Nefert. She showed up at Grandma Redbird's lavender farm completely, but naked. Killed Z's mom after Z's mom was finally like... <gasps> My husband's an asshole. My children are freaks. Only Zoe really understood me. It was too late. When she finally decided she was being a really bad mother. And that saying something. She was she was ugh, horrendous. Never shows up and kills her as a sacrifice to get some weird bull boy. I'm not joking. He's a bull. And a boy. All in one. Um, but it's... <laughs> That, that's another interesting twist that's going to come in later. I'm not going to tell you guys yet because then I'm just ruining my future videos. And what YouTuber would do that? It's just stupid. So, <clears throat> in the beginning of this book, Grandma Redbird goes to the House of Night to tell Zoe about her mom. Yes, so but Z does have a dream about her mom being dead first. And then she and Stark has a weird fight about this because she woke him up and he was like so tired on the bus. Telling her that she shouldn't wake him up, but thanks. The sex afterwards was great. Boys, even vampire boys. Um, sometimes they suck, but we love Stark. Don't worry, he gets back to being well hot. <laughs> what does Aphrodite say about Stark? Stark and that sinfully hot mouth of his. Yeah. So after that, Thanatos. Remember, Thanatos is basically the high priestess of death. <laughs> From the High Council in Italy, she goes to the House of Night to be their temporary High Priestess there, and she's like, "Okay, Zoe, so I know about this like ritual where we can see what happened to your mom, and Zoe's all for it, but there's a new character in this book. His name is Orox, and Neferit brings him to the House of Night. So I'm pretty sure you guys can connect the dots." Nefret kills her mom, shows up with a new person, a person with bull's horns and moonstone colored eyes. Pretty damn obvious. But anyway, so his name is Oryx and he is the result of the whole sacrifice thing Nefret did, because let's just face it, Nefret's a bitch. I don't care what happens to her. And Nefert's curse, she remains a bitch. She'll always be a bitch. She's a whole bag. Um, she tasks Orox with making sure that this ritual doesn't happen. Now, we've already got big issues between Professor Dragon Langford and Raphaim. You remember Raphaim, he's the raven boy. There's a lot of animal mixture people in these books. It's kind of weird. We have the raven boy, the bull boy, but at least yes, Raphaim is a full boy awesome. during the night. <coughs> and I, I'm, I'm joking. Um, there is a price that has to be paid for conducting this ritual though. So Thanatos takes Zoe, Aphrodite, basically the whole nerd herd, to Grandma Redbird's lavender farm and they do the ritual. Aurox shows up. Remember, basically he's Nefret's dog on a leash. He has to do what she tells him to uh. do. Which sucks. It really sucks. It's like my husband is sitting back Rarok, which is really um it it's it, it it's really messed up because Dragon saw Aurox following the bus. So he followed Aurox because he's kinda back on Nefret's side after the whole FIM thing and there. Um, we see that something happens. I'm not going to spoil everything. Just read the books. They're amazing. Something happens which causes Aurochs and Dragon to kind of fight. And something happens to Dragon. The Earth basically swallows up Aurochs, hiding him because he's wounded. 
it's it's very interesting the way these rituals in these books work. They're really well thought out, very nicely done. But as I said, this is another really sad book. Uh, the more Z has the seer stone, the more she kind of loses her mind. This becomes more apparent in the next book, where some bad shit goes down. And my cats are chasing each other, sorry. But guys, that is Renavia's Val and Dayston. In a nutshell, next week we will be discussing another two for one, which will be Hidden and Nefert's Curse. I really don't like Nefert's Curse, but it's part of the series, so I just have to include it, which I don't like, but I will. And then we only have two videos left after that on the House of Night series. On the very last video, I will reveal the next books I will be discussing. But until then, thank you guys for watching. Please don't forget to stake that like button, hit the notification bell with the silver bullet, and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.